Hello friends, welcome. Friends, when I, uh, you know, uploaded this video, one of my viewers uh, requested me that uh, can I make a video explanation for FTTH technologies and its planning and about OLT in India. So there have been a lot of other questions where viewers have asked that why fiber optic speeds in India have not gone up significantly. So friends, what I thought, I'll take this opportunity to explain the, how the technology works and why speeds have not increased in India. So this is the slide deck which I prepared, understanding FTTH, why it works and why speeds are limited in India. So FTTH is fiber to home, everything, everybody knows about it. So it uses optical fiber end to end light in, instead of electricity. So we will talk about how optic signals in the optical fiber cable travels and how it is different from normal electrical cable. It delivers high speed, low latency, future proof broadband. So how FTTH works. So we have typically a optical line terminal equipment at the ISP. Now, this optical line terminal equipment at the ISP is emanating out of the backbone network. And I'm going to explain to you how the backbone network works and why OLT is necessary at the ISP. And this OLT will send data signal as light signals towards the customer premises. Now, the fiber cable in case of FTTH uses a passive splitter. And I'm going to describe the difference between a passive splitter and an active splitter. And then we have ONT, optical network terminal equipment at home. ONT converts optical signal into electrical for Wi-Fi router. You have seen your ONT at your home and then from there the Ethernet cable comes which goes to your Wi-Fi router and the signal gets disseminated into your house. Fiber uses total internal reflection to transmit light efficiently. Now friends, to, if, to understand the FTTS technology, we need to understand that how signal travels in an optical fiber cable. Now, those who are not engineers, who have not studied opti OFC, optical fiber uh, com communication, let me give you a short overview. So what happens is that you have a glass strand. This is the glass strand. I'm going to show you. So what you see is a glass. It is made, made up of glass. Now, when you are pumping light signal into the glass signal, what happens is that because the glass will bend, twist, etc., the light is not going to go out of the glass. It is going to undertake a total internal reflection. So it will travel like this and it will get contained within this glass cable. Now, since the light signal gets contained within this glass signal, it can travel long distances. But there is a problem. The problem is that the nature of this glass is not perfect. So whenever the light signal travels here, different parts and different wavelengths of the light will actually have different velocity. It will actually travel into different speeds because you know that the light speed will change a little bit when it trans tra transmits from one medium to another medium. Actually, it is constant, but because of the medium, there is a dispersion. So you see that as the distance increases, this is the signal that, that, uh, that you know, you initiated inside uh, the, the, uh, as soon as the signal got uh, got pumped into the optical fiber cable. So this is a data signal. Now the signal will get degraded as it travels. And because of that, you need optical generators, right? To regenerate this signal after every interval of time. It, it will depend upon the type of uh, technology that you are using in the case of backbone. So it can be 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers, depending upon how many wavelengths, how many lambdas you are pumping into this fiber. So let's say if you have only one lambda, then the dispersions are going to be different. If you have two lambda, three lambda, depending upon what kind of aggregation you're doing in this single strand of fiber, right? Now let's answer the basic question. Why we are using passive optical fiber network? Why not active optical fiber network? Because there are two types of network. One is active, another is passive. Now active optical fiber network, the difference between the passive and the active is that so let's go to directly to the diagram. So we have the OLT, which we spoke about, right? Uh, which has been the ISP premises. From there, there will be optical fiber cable. The multiple of optical fiber cable is going to go. And this is going to go into a Ethernet switch. Now, Ethernet switch on a physical layer, what it does, it splits the signal, which is coming out 
from the OLT into different strands of optical fiber cable going into each and every houses. So this is splitting the signal which is coming from, from the OLT into different cables, different paths which will be fed to different houses. Now, the problem that you have is the bottleneck here. The switch, it becomes an active element. It requires power. It requires maintenance. So the difficulty is that you don't have to have so many maintenance points in the field. Because if you have too many maintenance points and you have power equipment requirement in the field, then this will become the point of failure. And if it fails, all the houses are going to lose their broadband connectivity. So what we have done is we create a network called passive optical fiber network and passive optical fiber network is something like this we have optical olt it, it comes up optical fiber comes here and then there is a passive splitter it does not require any power nothing and then the uh, the single strands actually go into different houses so this uh, the this disadvantage between this uh, architecture and this architecture is that this ethernet switch because it is an active element it can drive long distances, but here, since this is a passive element here, it will not be able to drive long distances. It is going to be only a short distance, which is going to go, but it is good enough. But here, the maintenance points are all minimized. And that is why we use passive splitter. Now, let's go back to the slide. Why you don't use optical fiber network with passive, you know, an active optical fiber network in the field? Because Aon, as I already said, Aon uses Ethernet switch in the field, which is an active element. Each user gets dedicated fiber stand from the switch. The problems are that it needs power and cooling in the field, which is costly, requires many fiber stand, expensive and complex. Fiber cut management is also hard. Each cut, you know, affects a single user, right? Now, active, we already spoke about the diagram. Now, why we use passive optical fiber network? The diagram I have already shown you, one fiber from the OLT shared by many home via passive splitter. So, it is a shared optical fiber stand. Advantage is that no power unit in the field, lower cost and fewer failure points. Less fiber needed, one main fiber can serve up to 32 uh, to 64 homes. Easier cut management because read out one fiber entire branch can be restored because you just can have to shift one fiber and everything gets restored rather than you have to work on each and every fiber and it is cheaper and scalable solution than mass uh, for mass ftth so how pawn networks handle traffic so this is i'm not going to go into the details of you know the various layers of technology g pawn etc because that will make you very confusing we will not talk about that. My videos are always simple for laymen. So we have got two different type of streams. Just like you have in wireless uplink and downlink. So there is a downstream here and there is an upstream here. Now what happens in case of a pawn, the downstream signal, which is emanating out of the optical fiber cable, is a broadcast signal. It broadcasts to all ONTs. Now the ONTs are intelligent units. It will pick their own signal. The signal, everybody's signal is coming to all ONT, but ONT is intelligent enough to split their own signal. And that what happens is that each ONT picks its own data using a unique ID. That way you will be able to extract the your signal from the broadcast. Like for example, television channels, multiple of them is getting you know, bombarded at your house. Using the set-top box, you pick only one channel. Similarly here, the OLT will pick one, uh, his own uh, broadcast uh, signal which is, a, you know, targeted to that particular house from the multiple houses. Upstream is time division multiplexing. It is not broadcasting because it shares the same optical fiber cable or, or the wavelength in the upstream direction and uses a technology called time division. Time division means that it is a shared pipe and each and every user will get its own time slot and it avoids collusion without any active, without using any active switch, switches, right? So this is the way it works. Now, why speeds are limited in India? This is a question we have to ask. The technology limits, because India generally GPON is most common. We have got 2.5 gigahertz downlink, 1.2 gigahertz uplink, shared amount 32 through 64 users. The cost upgrading to X GPON, which is 10 GBPS is expensive. 
backhaul is also required internet backbone capacity is costly to scale commercial problem is that india is a low arpo market or operators can't justify their investment so friends the viewers who have been asking this question that why our speeds are limited only because of this because it requires some expensive equipment to upgrade their passive optical fiber network which can they cannot do easily because your arpus do not justify that's why the speeds are limited why other countries offer higher uh, uh, speeds 1 gbps easily because they have got higher arpu if you go to other countries you will get your uh, broadband at uh, you know you have to easily pay between 50 to 100 dollars maybe you know some countries may be lower but it is within that so it's a huge amount of arpu these people are able to collect and these are smaller geographical could be easier roll out xgpon and ngpon2 already deployed government subsidies and fiber initiatives are there right so the key takeaways here is that ftth best broadband technology for speed and reliability it is much better than even wireless technology which has got which is highly unreliable right passive design is equal to cost saving per easier fiber management speed limits in india is because of economic and tech upgrade cost not fiber limitation if your technology is not going to be upgraded to support higher speed you will not get better speed so it the whole network has to be overhauled for better speed and the operators don't want to make the investment with the demand growth one gbps will become common in india when you are willing to spend money and people will like to demand higher speed there will be competition in the market then only the speeds are going to increase so that's all friend in a very short and sweet video i just cover this within 12 minutes i hope that my question to the viewers the viewer who asked this question has been answered and other viewers who have been asking question as to why speeds of 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 fiber optical cable connections have not increased their question has also been answered and i have not gone into technical jargon details to make the issue very confusing so i hope you like this video and thanks for watching till the end and i'll come back with a new video on a new topic next time thank you friends